From the first moments of the new DLC mission for Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's clear intermission is mostly a comedy. <laughs> In jumps Yuffie, a teenage ninja secret agent and one of the original game's optional characters, and immediately her dangerous espionage mission to infiltrate the evil Shinra Corporation is portrayed more like a kid goofing off. It's a vibe that really works for the DLC, thanks to the fact that Remake continues to be great about establishing fun, eccentric characters. Men steal their ultimate materia to prove to our common enemy that Wutai is not to be trifled with! Taking place in the middle of Remake's story, during the portion in which Cloud is separated from his compatriots, Intermission follows Yuffie as she works to infiltrate Shinra and steal a secret weapon on behalf of her homeland, Wutai. The mission is full of real-life danger, but Yuffie approaches it with all the seriousness of playing pretend. Her excitement and enthusiasm is infectious, an interesting counterpoint to the righteous anger at Shinra demonstrated by characters such as Barret in the remake. But the trouble with Intermission is that this side story doesn't feel essential to the bigger Final Fantasy VII picture. Sure, the DLC provides context and backstory for a character that fans of the original Final Fantasy VII know will show up later in the story, but it does little to connect with Remake's larger plot as it stands now. Yuffie's a fun character to spend time with, even if you don't have history with her from the first iteration of Final Fantasy VII, but the DLC still comes off as a tease for something better down the road in FF7 Remake's next installment. As the name suggests, intermission feels like a half measure to fill time while we wait for the real show. That's not to say that intermission isn't fun though. When Yuffie is in combat, which is pretty damn often, she's a blast to play. Like all Remake's characters, Yuffie has her own distinct combat style. As a Wutai ninja, she packs a throwing star that's good as a close-range melee weapon or at longer ranges. Choosing whether to fight up close or from far away allows you to control the flow of the battle and mount huge combos. You can get in close to wail on enemies, bounce back to create a gap, then throw the star for distant damage with Yuffie's elemental ninjutsu attacks. Tap the triangle button, and you can retrieve your thrown star, not by drawing it back to you, but by sending Yuffie to it, allowing you to quickly cover ground and maneuver around the battlefield. Partway through the first chapter of the DLC, Yuffie is joined by Sonon, a slightly older Wutai operative. In combat, Sonon acts as another means by which Yuffie can build combos. You can't control him directly, but you can issue orders like in Remake. He also has a command called Synergy, where Yuffie and Sonon execute their abilities and attacks together for big damage and added effects. It's a cool, if fairly simple, system that provides another tool for combat, while keeping the focus on Yuffie and her specific style. Can't be it. It's in the dynamic between Yuffie and Sonon where Intermission is at its best. Because Yuffie is technically the senior ninja despite her age, Sonon defers to her judgment, while bouncing between feeling exasperated by her overconfident antics and trying to give her a little helpful advice. For her part, Yuffie takes it all in stride. She knows how great a ninja she is, but she also never lets go of that air of trying to appear cool to whoever happens to be looking in her direction. We got this! She's a kid with incredible talent who's still desperate to be taken seriously, while Sonon is a protective older brother type looking for a middle ground between annoying overbearance and risky overindulgence. While the dynamic between Yuffie and Sonon is an interesting one, it doesn't get tested or pushed very much. That's because the DLC never puts the pair in especially impactful situations over its four to five hour runtime. The first chapter is mostly about hanging around the Sector 7 slums, killing time before heading to the Shinra building in Chapter 2. There's just not much in the way of character conflict, or really conflict in general, except for dealing with the robots Shinra dispatches to try to stop you. The same goes for what the story adds to the overall tale of Remake. Intermission plops you in the middle of Sector 7, in the middle of that story, but your presence doesn't add any nuance to what's already there. What is interesting are the moments where Yuffie and Sonon have discussions that give a Wutai perspective on what we've seen of Midgar and Shinra. They give us little looks into both Yuffie's character and the larger political landscape of Final Fantasy VII in a way that helps you understand the world a little better. But these moments are pretty few and far between, and while the character building for Yuffie is nice, it's not super clear what's to be gained by revisiting this point in time 
or these places. There's a big swing in this feeling right at the end of the DLC, where Intermission starts throwing deep cut FF7 characters into the mix. It seems pretty clear that the idea here is to bring in the wider FF7 universe, fleshed out in spin-offs like Crisis Core and Dirge of Cerberus. But the DLC doesn't provide any context for what's going on or who these people are. Again, Intermission feels like a tease for where things are going later on, when we're likely to get a more complete look at some of these elements. But for now, it mostly just makes Yuffie's story more confusing. Apart from the main story, Intermission also adds some side content to keep you busy, but it mostly just pads the runtime. There are a few combat challenges and minigames, like Remake's Whack-A-Box, providing Yuffie versions of things from the vanilla game. The big new addition is Fort Condor, a sort of light strategy minigame. In the broadest sense, it's a board game that mixes the spirit of chess with the creature summoning of Magic the Gathering. You get a series of characters you can place on your side of a game board, who then march toward your opponent's side and try to destroy their three forts. Your opponents can also drop characters to fight yours, and which side wins a fight depends on a rock-paper-scissors class system. Fort Condor is easy to pick up and can be fun, especially as you add new pieces for more attack and defense options, and the ability to use some magic spells during a match. But it's all pretty simplistic. You don't control the characters, you just choose where to put them, and the strategy is all about what pieces you use and when. Whoever has the game board that lets them get pieces out faster tends to win, and there are just not a lot of brainy options or strategies that can help you win out over someone with better stuff than you. With only a handful of matches to play during your first run through the story, it also won't keep you busy for very long. Goodbye fortune, goodbye pride. The story of Intermission, Fort Condor, and all the other content in the DLC suffer from the same problem. They feel pretty thin. Not that an add-on chapter to a game needs to be huge, but Intermission takes place in one of the hub areas of FF7 Remake, and yet lacks meaningful character interaction or side quests to flesh out its world. Hanging out with Yuffie and Sonon is fun, but while you have run-ins with a number of important characters in key moments, the whole thing adds little to Remake as a whole. In the end, Intermission is a pit stop, a quick jaunt into the gas station mini-mart of Final Fantasy VII to refuel, grab a snack, and get ready to wait some more. With its fun combat and quirky character moments, it'll likely remind you of what you like about FF7 Remake, but it won't be enough to hold you over. Is that the gist of it, boss? It sure is! <laughs>